Hey, how's it going? You're watching another video of Artventure Films, and this video will be all about van life. What is van life? What do you need for van life? And what you could think of when buying or building out a van? So what is van life? Well for me, van life means that you are either living in your van or that you are traveling with your van. And I don't want to say one or the other is the right thing to do because there's the same idea behind it because you want to get out and explore, you know, the, the surroundings, other countries, other places in a cheap and still comfortable way because you're, you got your bed everywhere, you don't have to set up a tent. It's a more convenient way of just traveling with your backpack, which is why I have done it not only traveling in my van, but actually living in there as well for one year in Austria after dropping out of uni and building out an old fire truck. When my stay came to an end, I decided to use the opportunity of having a built out van to drive around Europe. I started in Austria, drove to Italy and spent most of the trip going around France, finally reaching the border to Netherlands and driving back to Hamburg. But this video is not here to tell you all about the places I've been. I wanted to give all my fellow van life people and everyone that thinks about doing the same an insight of what it's like and what you could think about in advance. So we're gonna start off with what would you need? Well, a van would be nice, but I guess any car would do the job. I highly recommend some space, especially headroom, which I didn't have in my van. Not being able to stand up straight inside my van was particularly tough while I was living in it. You can get away with it for traveling around, but any longer will be so much nicer when you can actually stand up straight or walk around. A good mentality is the way to go, because if you're in a small van, you really have to make the best out of every little corner. And not only the space makes van life so tough, but the situations that you will have to deal with when, you know, <laughs> traveling around or staying inside of your van. You're in control, mate. Enjoy your surroundings and go explore. What would you have to think about when buying a van? Well, my van did not have air conditioning and neither did it have a heater when I bought it. Those two elements are probably one of the most important accessories depending on how warm or cold the places are that you're going to visit. I used a water spray bottle to try and tackle the heat in France and drove to the nearest swimming opportunity whenever I could. For the cold winter months in Austria, I had a fire stove built inside which was awesome, but it might not be for everyone. It was so cozy, but very hard to control the amount of heat. Especially when you compare it to a diesel heater. If you think about having one, make sure to have an exchange of air from the top to the bottom, because otherwise your floor will become a fridge and the ceiling will become a sauna. Fuel consumption is a big part too when it comes to buying a van. Old cars tend to use a lot more fuel than newer ones. And mine was pretty bad too, which did not make it fun to go explore or take a more scenic way when it takes four times as long. Not to have power steering wasn't too bad in my opinion. I really enjoyed the feeling of an old van. So you've got a van and you want to build it out. What are the essentials? Insulation? Well, I wouldn't think so. The most essential thing that you will want to have in your van is gonna be a nice comfy bed. Everything else is gonna be secondary. A small kitchen setup to cook is pretty cool to have and you want to store some things all over your van so yeah that's nice to have too. A fridge definitely pays off when it's really hot and you could also think about having an emergency toilet. From there everything else will be on top. For example I wanted to have my van as a small editing station so I put in a second monitor and a big battery so I could feed my laptop and actually do some editing in there. Really think about what you actually need and if you want to just drive around for a couple of months or you want to really live in the van, which is definitely not an easy task. Next up on the list is where are you going to go? Well, some people probably have places in mind that they want to visit, but you can really go anywhere. That's the beauty of it. You can go to the next town or the next country. You can stay anywhere. So the choice is yours. 
It's not always as easy to find a nice place to stay though. An app can really help you out. I used Park for Night and found some gorgeous spots. I would have loved to explore a lot more and find places myself, but the car just used too much fuel so I had to keep it together and take a more efficient way, which was having a look for where I'm going to camp and just go straight to that place. Overall, for me, going for a trip in your small home is amazing. Don't be afraid to take a wrong turn or to try another route. You will go to the most beautiful places and you know every day is gonna be another question mark because you don't know whether you're gonna have a wicked spot or not. I think it's a very nice way of traveling anyway. So that was my sum up of living in the van and driving around France. I could do a lot more of those videos where I can just explain my experiences in, in Austria and I will definitely build out another van for everyone that's wondering why I sold my van but right now I'm working in a production company in Hamburg and I'm living in my apartment and I don't have money to pay for another van. And that was it. That was it for the video and I hope you enjoyed my sum up. I'll talk to you in the next one.